Maca's guides. <laughs> Hey everyone, Maka here, and welcome to the easiest games of 2021 for Gamerscore and Xbox achievements. In this video, I will be showing the top 90 easiest games, as well as counting down the top 20. If at any point during the video, you're interested in purchasing one of these games, links will be included in the YouTube description down below, and it'll help out the channel with a kickback. Going over the rules super quickly, all of these games are on Xbox and have released in the 2021 year. All games in the top 90 are 30 minutes or less, and require minimal skill because of their low difficulty. Something new that I've added to this year's video is that I will be adding an asterisk in the top right corner if the game offers more than 1000 gamer score, and there will be a stack icon if the game is available on Windows with a separate achievement list. Now I'm not going to get into the nitty gritty of my opinion on where Gamerscore has went in 2021, but it is very obvious to me that developers and publishers have optimized the exchange of money to Gamerscore, and in many cases you don't even have to play the games anymore. You'll see what I mean once we start getting into some of the easiest games. On screen, you've been seeing some of the games that are in our top 90, so take a screenshot or look down below. Either way, let's just get into it. Starting off with number 20, we have Zophis. Zophis is a 3D isometric adventure game where you are given a couple of tasks to complete in the office during a zombie apocalypse. And in order to get all the achievements, you will need to do the game in five minutes or less. And for most of the games in our list, a guide will generally help you do the game faster. If you get the speed run down on your first try, you can get this game done in five minutes. But if you have to do two or three runs, you could take approximately 15 minutes. You'll also notice that this is the first game in our list with a stack icon in the top right corner, which means you can do this game a second time on Windows with a cost of $5. In at the number 19 spot, we have a game called Butterfly 2. Now don't confuse this game with Butterfly 1, which we'll talk about later in the video. This game is available as a stack on Windows and it will offer more than 1000 gamer score. On top of that, it's also one of the worst games you'll ever play. Butterfly 2 is a puzzle platformer with graphics that look like they are created by a six year old. And in this game, you'll be completing the first 10 levels to unlock the 1000 gamer score with each level after that being saved for DLC achievements. In at the number 18 spot, I have Dr. Atominus, which also offers a stack and more than 1000 gamer score. Now I don't know how long the actual game is and I doubt anyone in the gamer score community knows, but if you're just looking for the achievements, you'll be done within about five minutes. Although in terms of like skill and guidance, it is a little bit more involved than our average game lower down in the list. We're now in the 17th position and still no visual novels in sight. Things have really changed. We have two Synchro Hedgehogs, which is on the same bar of quality as Butterfly, Butterfly 2, and Synchro Hedgehogs, the original game all four of which came out this year. The developer has been very busy. Two Synchro Hedgehogs is a puzzle platforming game where you control two hedgehogs synchronously at the same time. You'll be moving them around the screen, making sure both of them eat the fruit and making sure they both stay alive in order to clear the levels. Clear about 10 levels, you'll have a thousand gamer score. Keep going after that and you'll get more and more until the DLC achievements are done. In at the number 16 position, I have the original Synchro Hedgehogs game and I promise you, I can't tell them apart either. Both of these games are pretty much the exact same game, just made twice so that they could make double the money from the achievement community. But if you are on that grind and looking to raise your gamer score for whatever reason, these aren't the worst options out there. In at the number 15 position, I have our first visual novel of the year. This game is called A Year of Springs and takes around 15 minutes to complete. However, because it is a visual novel, the difficulty is pretty much at an all time low. 
You will need to either follow a text guide or a video guide, but all you'll be doing is selecting dialogue options and doing a couple of playthroughs while skipping through everything possible, and you'll get all your playthroughs done, each within a matter of minutes. In at the number 14 spot, I have a game called Tony and Clyde, the only game in our top 20 that I haven't personally beaten yet, as it does cost $10 instead of the typical five, although it does feel like the developer and publisher at least put a little bit more effort into this one than some of our others. You can get this done in a matter of about five minutes, and it is a twin stick shooter style game. And in order to complete it, you'll have to find yourself killing 30 NPCs, dying a couple of times, dodging a couple of times, and that's pretty much it. You will be done extremely quickly. It does offer 1000 gamer score, but I've put an asterisk on screen as the developer and publisher have noted that they do plan on adding title updates with gamer score in the future. In at lucky number 13, we have Flasco Man, which is one of the fastest games I personally did this year, clocking in at four minutes. However, it is a side-scrolling kind of platformer with a couple of puzzle elements here and there. So it's possible you get stuck on a level, have to retry a level a couple of times, and it might take you a whopping 10 minutes or more. Otherwise, it's a pretty basic game and somewhat well-made. I actually enjoyed this one more than some of the other games on the list. In at the number 12 spot, I have a game called Ball Lab. And the most interesting thing about this game is that if you read the title backwards, it's still Ball Lab. Otherwise, it's a super simple platforming game where you just play a ball and you jump around the map. You'll have to complete, I think, 10 levels and then you'll just have to jump in the pit and die 300 times, and you can do this within a matter of about five to 10 minutes. Next up at number 11, I have a game called My My Te. I'm not even sure how you pronounce this game. I don't even know what language the title is in. It's either Portuguese, maybe French, or maybe Latin? I don't know, maybe someone in the comments down below can let me know, but this is a super simple platforming game where you'll complete a couple of really easy levels within about five minutes. You'll unlock gamer score along the way. You can stack it on Windows and you can expect title update achievements in the future. This is about as easy as it gets, but yes, there are actually 10 games that I've classified as easier. We are now breaking into the top 10 where you can expect every game to be under 10 minutes and have pretty much no difficulty associated with it, starting off with a game called Pucan Bye Bye. Great titles in these top 10s coming up, by the way. As for the type of game this is, I don't even know because you don't have to play it in order to get the achievements. Instead, you'll start on the first map and jump off and die 100 times. After that, you will input a cheat code 30 times to complete 30 levels and you will be done and you can uninstall this game. You literally don't even have to play it. In at the number nine position, I have a game called Nowhere Girl, which is a visual novel that takes 10 minutes. As with all visual novels, it's pretty much just a menu game as you're selecting dialogue options in order to get all the endings. You may need to follow a text or video guide, but you don't really require any skill. And if you just smash the buttons long enough, you will get all the achievements. In at the number eight position, I have the cheapest game on the list called No Thing coming in at $1.99 US. Also, probably the only game on the list where the developer and publisher weren't purposely trying to make their game easier to increase their sales. This game has what some may call an unfortunate bug, where if you skip the levels, it will just grant you the achievements for completing them. There's also a bug where you can get the high score by just pretty much smashing a couple of buttons. So you can get the thousand gamer score in less than 10 minutes for less than $2. In at the number seven position, I have the instant classic game, Butterfly One. And the reason that this one is so much higher than Butterfly Two is because you can just load into a level, you can pause the game, and it'll just give you the achievement for that level. And then you can just skip to the next level and do it over and over and over again. Meaning that you can get this game done in five minutes and you literally don't even need to play it. Just load a level, pause it, and continue. I don't know if this is an accidental glitch or if the developer just wanted more people to buy their game, 
but Butterfly 1 is as bad as they come, but also as easy as they come. In at the number six position, we have Smart Moves 2. Not to be confused with the original that came out last year, and you can get this game done in around four minutes. You will just farm the first level for chests, farm the second level for kills, and you'll be done extremely, extremely quickly. You can expect a stack as well as gamer score to be added in the future. Also, if you actually play through this game for fun, it's actually pretty cool. At the number five position, I have a game called Taco Rita Meets Fries, and this is a five minute visual novel. You have a game under five minutes. You have a game that's a visual novel. You'd expect it to be number one, but things get even easier from here. I don't really have much to say about this game. I played it, but I don't remember playing it because it is that small of a glimpse of my gaming career in 2021. In the number four position, we have another visual novel. You'll see a bit of a trend here. The last one was five minutes, but Cross the Moon is four minutes in order to complete. Again, it's a visual novel, so it's basically just a menu. Choose a couple of options, click a couple of buttons, and you will be done in absolutely no time. The hardest part is uninstalling the game, realizing you just spent $5. Next up, we're in the third position, following the trend with another visual novel. We were at five minutes, then four minutes, but this one takes three minutes. It's called Venus Improbable Dream, and unfortunately, it's $10. You will have to obviously turn the text on to max speed and then auto-scroll through the game, but you will complete this game making a total of six dialogue choices, and it will be done. That is it. Good luck. At the number two position, I have a game called From Earth to Heaven, which I did in literally two minutes. Now, this one doesn't necessarily follow our typical trend, as this is like a 3D platformer game. But for some reason, when you load into a level, it gives you an achievement for making progress through the game. However, there is level skip and level select. So you can just select the level, quit out, select the next level, quit out, select the next level, and so on and so on and so on. Basically, in two minutes, you'll visit a couple of different menus and have the thousand gamer score. Also, I believe if you have an Xbox Series X, your loading times will be faster. And this is a game that you can do a lot faster than someone with an old generation Xbox. So you'll really be getting your money's worth on that new console. In the number one position, we have a game that shouldn't surprise you if you're in the gamer score community and that is crime opera the butterfly effect which is a visual novel that can be done in two minutes on top of that you will just be selecting the no dialogue option every single time so you don't even really need a guide you will need to turn on skip mode to make it as fast as possible but this is as easy as it will get in 2021 and I won't be surprised when it gets even easier in 2022. Don't forget to check out the purchase links in the YouTube description if you wanna help out the channel. Thank you so much for watching, share the video with a friend, drop a like, and hopefully I see you for more and more videos throughout the year. I'll be focusing on brand new releases and Xbox Game Pass titles. As always, a special thank you to everyone on Patreon for supporting the show. Peace.